little bit about the difference between eating something that just fills up our stomach versus eating something that actually makes us feel satisfied, right? So we can eat, you know, we can eat something like a salad, which is what I'm going to talk about today. We can eat a salad that's just a bowl of lettuce and, you know, a bunch of chopped up raw vegetables. And that will certainly fill up our stomachs and make us feel the sensation of fullness, but it might not actually leave you feeling satisfied. Right, so the other piece of the puzzle there is taking into consideration what you actually want, what you are craving, what you're in the mood for, what's gonna make you feel good, what's gonna actually give you pleasure, and also what's gonna help you feel fuller for longer. Right, so if we eat just that bowl of lettuce and vegetables, we might be full right now, right after we finish the meal, but about 30 minutes later, you might find yourself scavenging for snacks and wondering why you're so hungry when you just ate this big salad. So let's talk about what might be missing there and look at what we can add into the salad to build a more satisfying meal, right? Because maybe something like the lettuce with the raw vegetables is good for a snack or a side dish to a dinner. But if you want to have a salad that's actually your meal, whether it be for lunch, for dinner, you're gonna to wanna to make it more satisfying. So I kind of break down satisfaction into five different factors. So we have the nutrition factor, which is that combination of carbohydrates, protein, and fat, right? So that well-balanced meal that's going to really give us that feeling of fullness for longer, that's really going to keep us satisfied until our next snack or meal. The next thing is the flavor factor. So of course you wanna have something that has a lot of flavor, but it should also be flavor that you want, right? So whatever you're in the mood for. So kind of thinking about, you know, what type of cuisine you're in the mood for. Um, you know, if you're gonna want like a Greek salad or more of a, you know, taco Tex-Mex kind of salad, and that kind of idea will help you figure out what types of flavors you wanna have in the salad. Then we have the texture factor, and that's gonna be things like crispy, crunchy, chewy, gooey, uh, creamy, um, things like that. So we want to always have some kind of balance of texture in our meal. Like you might think sometimes when you go to get a snack, like you think to yourself, what am I in the mood for? I want something crunchy, um, I want something salty, right? So that's flavor and texture coming into play. So it's the same thing when we're trying to build a satisfying meal. We have the temperature factor, so that's, very basic, are you in the mood for something hot? Or are you in the mood for something cold, right? If you go for a salad and really inside you're in the mood for something really warm and comforting like a bowl of soup or chili or something like that and you settle for a salad, you're probably not gonna feel satisfied after because you didn't really satisfy what you actually wanted. So that's a big thing to consider. And then lastly, the fifth factor is the desire factor. So that really ties everything in, right? It's what you actually want. It's what you are craving. It's what you're in the mood for. It's what you know is going to leave you feeling good about what you ate. It's gonna you know, give you whatever you're looking for in that moment. Are you looking for some energy to get you through the rest of your day? Are you looking for something comforting at night? Whatever it is, you wanna take all of that into consideration. We're just gonna kinda of go through some different components of the salad and what you can really add in there to actually make it a satisfying meal. And I'm talking about a salad that has a base of greens, right? Because salads can take on a whole lot of different forms. We can have salads that have a grain as a base, some sort of whole grain salad. Um, we can have just like a warm vegetable salad. So salads can take a lot of different forms, but I'm talking about just a classic, you know, greens as the base and different kinds of veggies and protein and things like that. We're gonna start with the base, with the greens and talk about how we can amp that up a little bit. One of the things that you can consider is switching up the base of your greens or also combining different greens together. So doing a little bit of one and a little bit of another because they all have different textures, they all have different flavors. Okay, so in this bowl right now, I have some iceberg lettuce. So iceberg is gonna be just super crunchy. It doesn't really have much flavor. It's a lot of water content, but so it's gonna add a really nice kind of like refreshing and crunchy flavor. And then I'm gonna combine that with baby spinach, which is going to have a much more delicate texture. It's a lot softer, right? And the spinach is also going to be a bit more nutritious than the iceberg lettuce, so we get a nice healthy balance of our greens here. And we'll just toss those together. So um, 
different kinds of salad greens are in season right now too. So um, things like spinach, arugula is in season now. And arugula is really great to add into a salad because it's one of the most flavorful um, greens that you can use as a really nice peppery flavor. So that's a way to add some different flavor into your salad, just starting with the base with the greens. So now we have some spinach and some iceberg lettuce. Okay, so let's talk about different veggies that we can add in. So a lot of times we resort to typical vegetables in our salad, like some tomatoes, some cucumber, maybe some red onion, things like that. But one really good way to add some different texture and flavor into your salad is to switch up the veggies that you use. And a really good way to do that is to use what's in season. So radishes are in season. So I have some radishes sliced up here. And I'm gonna just show you how we slice those up. So you can use um, a mandolin if you have it for really thin slices, but a sharp chef's knife will do the trick too. So the radishes come right in a whole bunch. The greens have been chopped off. And then I leave a little bit of the stem there as kind of like a, a way for me to hold it. So we're just gonna slice these nice and thin. So different, there are you know a lot of different kinds of radishes and every kind of radish is gonna have a different flavor. So these radishes are probably the ones that you see most commonly and they have a, a pretty like peppery flavor to them. So they actually add a lot of flavor into a salad. But then there's radish like watermelon radish, which has a much milder flavor. So you can play around with different kinds of vegetables that maybe you don't use so often and learn if you like the flavors of them. And then adding different kinds of veggies into your salad can help, you know, so you don't get bored with what you're eating. So we just want these nice thin slices of radish and those are gonna go right into the salad. Now, another thing that you can do to add um, some, you know, like salty, sour kind of flavor into the salad would be to do a quick pickle of these radishes. Like we're used to using just regular tomatoes in our salad, which is great, especially when tomatoes are in season. Um, in the summer, they're full of flavor, so they add a lot of flavor to the salad. But like here, I have some leftover roasted tomatoes. So whenever we cook a vegetable in any sort of way, like roasting it, um, you're going to get a different flavor. I'm actually just gonna slice up some of these roasted tomatoes. So another common uh, vegetable that you see in salads is red cabbage, but maybe you see it a lot in salads that you eat out but a lot of people don't use it in their salads at home. So of course you can always buy pre-shredded cabbage, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to do it yourself. So this was a whole head of cabbage that I just sliced right in half. So this is just half the head of cabbage. And like always, right, we want to use the flat side of the vegetable to keep it stable. We don't want to use this side where it's all wobbly. So all you're going to do is cut thin, slices across okay just like that and just like that you have these nice shredded cabbage and then you can just cut this in half so you get some smaller pieces and that's that the cabbage is going to add a nice crunch and similarly to the radishes, you could use the exact same pickling recipe that you would use for the radishes and you could pickle the cabbage and that will also give you a totally different flavor than the raw red cabbage. Having a vegetable with the peel like the cucumber versus no peel is going to make a difference both in the taste of the vegetable and in the texture. Right, so this cucumber is going to give us a lot more crunch from that, almost like a chewy crunch texture from the skin, whereas this doesn't. So that could also just be personal preference. If you prefer your cucumbers without skin, then peel them and put them in the salad so you actually enjoy having them in there. Right, so that's just a cucumber all sliced up. Right now, this is pretty much a salad filled with vegetables, right? We have some cooked vegetables in here, but we really want to now talk about adding in the protein, the fat, and the carbohydrate. So most of the veggies in here, and 
generally the veggie that we typically use for salads are non-starchy vegetables. And non-starchy vegetables provide very little protein, fat, or carbohydrate, right? Starchy vegetables are the, are the vegetables that provide more carbs. So we really want to amp this up a lot um, to really get some more nutrient value in there because that's what's really going to give us that, that real fullness factor that's actually going to last, right? So that you're not hungry 30 minutes later. So uh, there are a few ways that we can do this. One of my favorite is to add some chopped nuts or some seeds like pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds in there. So I have here a couple options I have. Um, pecan halves, these are just raw pecan halves, um, and some shelled pistachios that are already roasted and salted. So a huge way to get some more flavor into um, any sort of nuts or seeds that you're gonna put in, which is going to then add flavor to your salad, which is one of our satisfaction factors, right? We can toast um, any raw nuts. So like these are already roasted and salted, so I can just chop these up and throw them right in. If I'm using the raw pecans, I want to throw them in the oven at a low temperature, like 300 degrees for just about like 10 minutes or so. I just want them to get toasty enough that you start to, to smell them a little bit, but that they're not getting burnt. Okay, but that's gonna add so much flavor to these. So let's use the pistachios that are already roasted and salted. Just gonna take a small handful of those. And with chopping nuts, you're just, you know, you just wanna kind of run your knife through. I'm kind of creating more of a, a Mediterranean kind of salad. So the pistachios actually work really well here. So maybe if I was doing I was doing more of like a blue cheese and fruit salad, I might want to throw the pecans in there because I love how blue cheese and pecans go together. Um, something like an Asian salad that's got like different kinds of um, cabbage and like mandarin oranges, you very often see slivered almonds in those kinds of salads. So that can um, kind of help guide you of what to add in. Okay, I'm just gonna toss all those pistachios in there. And then another thing that we can add in for some chewy texture and some sweetness, right? So we can add a little bit of a sweet flavor by using either fresh fruit, um, especially in the summer, like salads that have sliced strawberries or blueberries in there are delicious. Um, but we can also use dried fruit. So very often you'll see like dried cranberries in a salad. So that's what we're gonna toss in here. Just like, I mean, this is a big salad, but you use like a quarter cup of dried fruit in your salad. A little bit goes a pretty long way. And again, this is not something to be worried about, like the sugar content of the dried fruit, right? We're not eating a whole bag of dried cranberries. We're just sprinkling some into our salad to make it more satisfying, right? You're better off adding this stuff into the salad now, making it more satisfying, making it something that's going to actually leave you feeling satisfied for longer so that you don't end up in the cabinet eating the entire bag of dried cranberries, right? So we'll add them into the salad now. I have some feta cheese left on hand, so that's what I'm going to toss in. I'm just gonna crumble it up, put it right in there. So like I mentioned before, something like blue cheese is delicious in a salad, um, especially with some dried fruit, some pecans. Um, if you're gonna make like a taco salad, you can throw some shredded cheddar cheese in, whatever works. And then what I'm actually going to be using in the salad for more of a protein kick is chickpeas. So this is canned chickpeas that I drained and rinsed and they're just sitting on a sheet tray on a clean dish towel to totally dry. Okay, and then I'm actually going to roast these in the oven. So you can certainly just toss them in raw, but, well not raw, they're, they're cooked, they're out of the can, but you can just toss them in like this but actually roasting them is gonna make them crunchier, so we're gonna, again, get some more texture. It's gonna give them a heck of a lot more flavor, especially if you add some different kind of spices to them that you like. And they'll just roast in the oven at like 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or so, and they'll get nice and crispy. So those chickpeas are going to give us a nice, um, hefty dose of protein. They're gonna give us some carbs and some fiber, um, which is going to help keep us fuller for much longer and make this a much more satisfying salad. I would certainly, you can add any kind of protein to the salad that you have, uh, you know, any kind of chicken. Maybe if you make some shredded chicken, 
um, on a Sunday as part of your meal prep, you toss that into the salad, salmon, um, shrimp, any other kind of beans, tofu, um, whatever you have, whatever you want to toss in there for protein. And one of the most underrated ingredients to add to a salad that's going to give us a whole lot of flavor is fresh herbs. So if you have any fresh herbs on hand that go with what you're making, again, going with you know whatever theme of the kind of flavor um, profile that you're going with, so I'm making more of a Mediterranean kind of salad, so I'm going to add some fresh dill in there. So maybe if you're doing, um, if you're doing like a taco salad, you can add some fresh cilantro in there. Um, parsley is a pretty like neutral herb, so if you have that on hand, you can kind of toss that into any um, any kind of salad that you're making. Okay, so I'm just taking that off the stem, and I'm just going to chop it up just a little bit. Okay. All right, and then there are other things that you can add in um, for saltiness, right? So I have some. Uh, a mix of different kinds of Greek olives here that I can slice up and toss in there. Um, let's, you can use um, different kinds of canned um, fish like anchovies is delicious. That's like classic in a Caesar salad. Um, capers are delicious to get like a real burst of salty, of salty flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna slice up some of these olives here. are also going to add some healthy fat, right? Olive oil does come from olives, so olives do have fat in them. And I wanted to mention too that another way that you can add some carbs in there is by using some grains that you might have on hand, right? Something that you might already have cooked. We can make like grain salads where the grain is actually the base of the salad, but you can also toss some already cooked grains into this salad, right? So if you have I like to use like heartier whole grains for something like that. So something um, like wheat berries or farro, even like barley or even brown rice works too. Um, but that's just a great way also to use up some, um, some grains that maybe you already have cooked that um, you need to use up. Toss them in your salad and that will make the salad even more filling. Okay. And then the real game changer to me is making your own dressing. And it is really so easy. Making your own vinaigrette just kind of allows you to really play around with the flavor profile too. There's olive oil, there's red wine vinegar, there's lemon juice, minced garlic, salt, pepper, and dried oregano. So I added in the oregano because it goes with my Mediterranean vibe here with the salad. Okay, so you can kind of play around with the different flavors of different vinegars, right? Like a balsamic vinaigrette is going to be nice on something like that blue cheese salad, um, something with more fruit in it, like something a little bit sweeter. The red wine vinegar is great for things like Greek salads. And then, I mean, you can use apple cider vinegar, you can use sherry vinegar, you know, whatever, whatever you have, white wine vinegar. Um, and so using an olive oil based dressing um, with vinegar and lemon juice in it, right, that's gonna give us a lot of acidity and we're getting the healthy fat from the olive oil. So it's a nice, um, it's a nice, simple, very nutritious and flavorful dressing. And so I just add all of the ingredients into a mason jar. I find it's the easiest thing to do. And then you just shake it up. So you don't even have to whisk or anything. You just shake it. And, oh, and I forgot to mention, there is a little bit of Dijon mustard in this dressing. So that's what helps to emulsify it and keep it together. If you left the, the mustard out, which you can, you'll just see that, um, that separation of the oil and the, vinegar, and the vinegar. So you want to really shake it up before you use it. Once I'm ready to eat this, I'll drizzle it on. I'll drizzle it on again. Um, you don't want to dress your greens too heavily before you're actually ready to eat them, especially if you have some delicate greens in here. Like I have the spinach. Um, you know, it won't it won't hold up to the dressing if you do it too far in advance. So I wait right until I'm ready to serve, drizzle the dressing on, and mix it up. So our chickpeas are out of the oven and cooled, nice and roasted and crispy. Pop those in. You want to let them really cool for a little bit because they'll get crispier the longer they sit. Let's give that a toss. Oops. And even 
even the visual appeal of having all of this stuff in here is going to make for a more satisfying salad too. Okay. Let's serve this baby up. Even, you know, we use all of our senses to really enjoy the food that we're eating. So even the smell, like there's a smell of the fresh dill. Just want a nice light drizzle. Okay, voila, a nice satisfying salad. So I hope this helped you understand a little bit about the difference between eating just to fill our stomachs versus eating something that's truly going to leave us feeling satisfied. Um, and you can use these tips for you know building a more satisfying salad, even in your side dish salad, um, just to make it a little bit more exciting than maybe what you usually eat. Um, so I have a few resources linked, um, one to the recipe for a quick pickle radish, which you can use that same recipe to pickle red cabbage, red onion, or even things like sliced carrots. Um, I'll have a link to um, how to make your own homemade vinaigrette with a few recipes, including the one that I use today for my dressing. And I also have a whole resource there um, that goes through everything that I talked about, all the different tips um, for building a more satisfying salad. Um, and you can kind of apply those tips to some other, um, to some other meals to really start getting in the habit of building a more satisfying meal, one that's going to leave you feeling fuller longer and uh, be you know, what you actually want, what you're actually craving, and what will actually make you feel good.